Every time I do something with this thing, it hurts. People like you or I know we have an unshakable belief that cars are living entities. You, you can develop a relationship with a car, and that's what non-car people just don't get. Well, hey everybody, welcome back. Uh, as you can see, the RV is gone, it's in storage. Um, I've got the white Explorer sitting here. God, I think I'd have a name for this thing after so many years of having it. But uh, yeah, as you can see, I've cut the roof off of it to get better access to stripping everything down. So let's take a look at what it is I've done so far. Uh, all the interior wiring is now completely gone. I've got that all wrapped up inside of a box. The factory subwoofer and amplifier and all that are also tucked away in a box. Um, I got the ECM out of it just to protect it from the rain and whatnot. Yeah, it sat out of here last night and the night before, uncovered. So there's water in spots and whatnot, but oh well, don't really need the body. Engine and trans is still in it. I'm starting to just poke around here a little bit, just start taking off pieces and moving it aside because I actually have a plan for all of this. <laughs> and it, it's gonna be rad if I get to do it. I'm so excited for it and I haven't even, I haven't even started to put money away for it yet. But anyway, to get to what it is I'm gonna try and attempt to do today, um, on the Red Explorer I bought for my son, the, the rockers are rusted out like crazy, so I'm gonna cut it to a certain point to, to where I know it's gonna be past what it is that I need uh, to an extent. Um, really what I should do is, before I even cut anything off of this one, is make sure that I know exactly where the rust starts and stops on the red one, so that way I can cut out what it is that I need from this and then transfer it over. Which, by the way, I've never done anything like this before, so it's gonna be a learning experience for me. Uh, but hey, with enough ingenuity, I'm sure I can get it done. Oh, and, I, and a guy wants this back floor section. Uh, I guess his is rusted out, so I'm just gonna cut it as best as I can, just make one big square, and then I can send that off to him. So that's where I'm gonna start. I'm gonna just, just to kind of gauge at what it is these cutting wheels are capable of and just to see how hard it, how difficult it is to handle this machine that I got. So, let's get down to it. And you may have noticed my plethora of parts here. And you know, I've got some other stuff over there. Those seats are probably no good anymore since they sat in the rain, but whatever. But if you happen to have a first gen Explorer, I have a plethora of parts. Uh, <laughs> you don't want that, trust me. Uh, and you don't want the rear hatch. The glass is still good, but the hatch got twisted. So it won't. It won't close right if you try and put it on yours. Uh, that window's good, that's the passenger side rear. Uh, then we got some other plastic panels. And there's a sway bar, wiper arm, those plastic panels. And you don't, you don't want that piece either. That, that's, that's totally All right, let's see what this dinky little thing can do. Remember kids, always wear protection. That is if you can keep it in your hands. Aw, aw, dang it. <laughs> Forgot, there's water back here and I set my glove down and now it's all wet. Aww. Uh, whatever. This is gonna take a while. I need to follow that exact line because I just realized there's a support section through there. Cut my truck into pieces. This is my cutoff wheel. The compressor won't keep up. I mean, then again, it's just a little 10 gallon. We might have to change directions or at least change tools. Bent. <laughs> oh. 
and Caden. That little boxy bit is a bitch to cut through. My problem is, is I've got to cut past the fuel neck with the little digging wheel. Digging wheel. <laughs> the little cutoff wheel so that way I can get through it without hitting it with the sawzall. <laughs> So interesting development here. This spot right here is right where this piece kind of folds over. This fender meets, butts up against this piece like this, but it also comes down like this. And then this piece right here also butts up against this flat bit and this bit right here. So it's taking me a while to cut through this because I'm essentially cutting through one, two, three, four, five layers of stuff here. This is gonna take a minute. We can just take a moment to see here. You can see, like, it, it's pretty it's thick. It's like, I've gotta go through, I, I gotta, I'm trying to jump over the part where this piece folds down. And uh, so that way I can get on this side of it. Problem is, is right where that piece folds down is about right there so see i'm trying to get on the other side of this which is the fender this which is still the fender and this which is the box for the the fuel fill if i can just get on the other side of that i can get into the good stuff the easy stuff back here but now you can see you know i'm trying to not cut this and i don't want to get the saws all in there which will go right through it real quick, but I don't want to cut this and possibly cause a fire. A few inches later. Oh my goodness, this looks ridiculous. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. I know what you're thinking. No, th this is this is not the easiest way to get to the fuel pump. Sad part is, is the fuel pump's like way up there somewhere. It's not even right here. And uh, oh yeah, check this out. Accidentally cut a little bit of the frame here. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Hope I don't need that later. Yeah, there's the piece. Not the best work I've ever done, but uh, not bad for a first time, I guess. Hopefully he can use it. All right, but that bit's done. So, but. Like I said, I'm gonna really assess the uh, the rust on the red one before I start cutting into this stuff. And uh, I have kind of a plan put together. I might actually uh, start here with the sawzall, just rip this right all the way across, cut this whole section out, you know, up to the point where I need it, and uh, just trim down whatever it is I'm not gonna need off of the red one, just so I can start getting bits and pieces of this off a little bit quicker because eventually I want to get to the point where I'll pull most of the electrical and stuff out of it and then I'm gonna pull the front of the body off and then lean it over and I'll pull all the the rest of the electrical out from it and then it'll just be a rolling chassis and yeah we'll work on the next phase <laughs> which that's gonna be interesting and what phase would that be Landon <laughs> You're just going to have to wait and find out. <laughs> Till then, we'll see you next time. Okay, now the problem you have is that when you have the inert uncertainty of machinery, it is a machine. When something has foibles and won't handle properly, that gives it a particularly human quality because it makes mistakes. And that's how you can build a relationship with a car that other people won't get.